read me romance read read me romance read me romance read read me romance you could take a look in a book that's fine or you could sit back relax and unwind and read me romance read read me romance welcome back lady listeners hi everybody thanks for joining us today hey we've got a brand new book from piper rain you know their writing duo I never, no, realized, I, I never realized it was two people until she was emailing me and she was like, yeah, we've been doing this. And I'm like, is she talking in the third person? <laughs> oh my God, it took me a minute. And I was like, oh shit, there's two of them. So I we, always feel like a crazy person when I talk about myself in the third person, <laughs> but I do it all the time because Alexa Riley is like a different person. Yeah, it is. It's like, well, Alexa's got to do this. <laughs> <laughs> Alexa needs to write her chapter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, so we've got a uh, we've got a brand new book called Brood Love from Piper Rain. Um, we're super excited. I've, I, you know, this is the first time we've had him on the podcast, but um, she was really sweet. Like when we were emailing back and forth, like just super bubbly. And I was like, whatever you need, whatever you want. And I was like, okay, this is great. <laughs> and just like, here's here's a cover. Here's a book by Here's blah, blah, blah. I was just like, well, you have your shit together. I like yeah. that. It's nice yeah. when you get somebody that you haven't read before and it's mm-hmm. a new audio book. So you mm-hmm. get like double the hit. I know. It's exciting. So we'll talk about all their good stuff in just a minute. But um, I'm just going to come out of the gate with it. I've been reading Fifty Shades of Grey. Mm-hmm. And sorry, I also popped an Altoid <laughs> right before we started recording. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna chew it up real quick. So I don't know. Okay, let me back up. I know how it happened. So I don't know if you saw my saw my post in headquarters, but if you go on your Audible app, there's badges and like you win them for doing certain things on your Audible account. Yeah. Yeah. So like you get all this different stuff based on like, oh, if you listen to a book that's over 24 hours long, if you replay the same book over and over like you can get different levels you get like bronze, get gold. One instantly yeah bronze <laughs> silver and gold you probably have it on there you're probably gold level on there <laughs> and there's like if you share it and all this stuff i never realized how many there were and i shared it in the group the other day i was like does anybody have all of them like help me out and so we went through and I shared mine and it was actually really cool because the ones i didn't have the ladies told me how to get them they were like, oh, they were like to share it there. Cause one of them is like social butterfly and you have to share five books to your social media platform. And I was like, well, I don't want to share like all my books on social media. And they were like, no, 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 just make the post to only you. So only you see it. Yeah. And then you can go and delete it afterwards. And I was like, holy fuck. And I went and did it. And like five minutes later, I got the badge. I was like, this is great. Nice. So, I know. So they gave me like a cheat sheet. And so one of them was that you had to sample books. And so it's like, a, I forget what the sample thing is, but if you sample 20 books over a, a, however long you do it, if you sample that many books, you'll get a badge for it. Mm-hmm. Like just go and listen to the free sample. And I never do that. Like I never, I either buy the book or I fucking don't. I never listen to a sample of it. So I was like, shit, I need to do this. And so I started going through and it was taking me forever. And I was like, fuck, I have to do. And somebody told me we have to do it with 20. Like they told me right away how many, because it won't tell you how many you have to get until you get it. And it says, congratulations, you sampled 20 books. So somebody told me, they gave me a trick and they were like, put the speed all the way up, turn your volume down and just go through and start hitting books. Yeah. And I was like, that's genius. And it was like, it was like, and it'd be over in like 30 seconds, like the five minute preview yeah. sample or whatever. It'd be over in 30 seconds. I was like, this is great. So let me guess, you listened to 50 Shades. Yes. And it fucking got me. It, it got me. Right in. It, yeah. it was the opening scene and she is, her roommate Kate is sick and she's about to go interview him. And it fucking got me. You know, I've reread it a few times over the years. I mm-hmm. haven't reread it in a couple of years, but mm-hmm. I always skip book one. Really? Mm-hmm. Shit, why? Is it because he's like in and out? He's in and out, mm-hmm. and I kind of know what happens, and it's just, I like romance stories that are more fluffy, and yeah. that's yeah. two and three. So I just mm-hmm. go straight to two and three. They're long anyways. It takes me forever. It's 16 hours. Yeah. Like, I was shocked it was that long. <laughs> I was like, I read this book like 22 times. I remember How them being like 10,000 locations each mm-hmm. book. It's fucking long. Like, yeah. 
That was insane. So, you know, there's, there's, a, you know, I first read this book. I saw it on my Kindle. I downloaded it in March of 2012, which is really <laughs> exciting because it came out like a few months. I, like I wasn't that far behind whenever it was released, but um, I was like, oh, this is really cool. So anyway, so it had really been probably since 2013 that I read. That was probably the last time I read it. But I, I seriously read those books probably a dozen times each. I mean, and that would be a, that would be probably an undersell of how many times I actually read them. I think it's kind of like music sometimes. You know, a song will take you back somewhere. Yep. Mm -hmm. Some of these books can do that to me too. Fuck. It, like, it was like a punch in the gut. I mean, that's what it felt like. It was so real and tangible. And I was just like, I'm going to throw up. I have to listen to all the whole thing. <laughs> I, just, I fucking downloaded it. Like I had a credit and I was like, well, this is going to that now. So I bought it. And, you know, there's a lot that I am rediscovering listening to it again. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to listen to his perspective because, you know, I heard that the narration is fantastic, that the man that does Christian Grey on the, the first you know, they do the first book from his perspective, the entire book. I've heard that the narration's great, but I've heard that there is, uh, there's a lot in it that I would not like, like maybe, you know, cheating or it's not safe or whatever. I don't know. I don't want to know. I just don't want to know that that happened. You know, I'd yeah. rather live in my blissful ignorance and just not know. I don't think it's cheating, just to be clear, but inner well, thoughts are bad. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, that's good. I didn't know if it like actually played out. Oh, no. Like, it's like inner okay. thoughts. <sighs> I still don't know if I could stomach it. It would change my perspective of him. Yeah. You know, but I will say the more I read it, the more I'm like, this is why I write this shit. Like this is, I'm, I think it's based off of this because he is fucking crazy. Yeah. He is a lunatic and yeah. I can't stop reading it. <laughs> I love it. I mean, it's just like there. I'm so frustrated when I'm reading it because I'm mad at her because she's making these stupid decisions with him. I'm like, just fuck him or like, just leave him alone or don't call him. Don't text him. Like you show him. And then she ends up like bending to his will. And I'm like, I hate you. Well, this is wonderful. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like it's, it's eating me alive. Yeah. But he is absolutely crazy, and it's just, I love it. Like, I, I cannot get over how much I still love this book and how it holds up even all these years later. I even feel like in book three, nothing happens. Yep. Nothing really. But I'm like, this is great. It's all this in the love. <laughs> because they're happy. Like, yeah. It's not like boring mm -hmm. or anything like that. Things are happening around them. And uh huh. Like the book one is definitely high drama. And then book three, it's like you say, everything happens around them and they're a couple and they're solid. And that's really great to read later. But I do like just the discovery of the two of them and they're just angst. It's wonderful. I just, I forgot how, how great of a story it is. You know, when people can nitpick it and tear it apart and say, it's not written well, like it's, you know, really basic or blah, blah, blah. Say what you will. This book allowed the romance industry to come forward. Okay. You know, like this book to walk, this book walked so that Alexa Riley could run, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm zero. like that's the shit that I'm, you know, that I see now all these years later. I can't do the math. I don't know how many years it's been, but you know, since 2012, you know, how far the romance industry has come. Honestly, this money that this book made, made publishers invest in romance like they had never invested before. And there's always been romance re readers, ravenous romance readers, but publishers didn't put money into it, you know? And so now, not only have publishers put money into it, but the self-publishing industry has blown up to where there's there's so much at your fingertips, you know? Mm -hmm. And I hear some people say like, oh, the market's saturated or it's, you know, blah, blah. Like, what? Fuck off. The more, give me more romance. There's never enough romance, you know? Like, yeah. Like, I, I'm a reader. It doesn't matter to me. Like, I'll, I'll always write romance because I love it, but I want to read all the romances, you know? Like, I just think that's kind of a cop out. And, you know, there are, People, like I said, there's people who trash it. There are people who have built their entire platform on tearing this book up. 
I know. And they can suck my asshole. <laughs> you know, like it's just, you know, even if you don't like the book, like you said, you mm -hmm. have to respect the fact that it blew the doors open for a bunch of people to come forward yep. and start writing and these communities to build together. And that is yep. crazy awesome. It is. And you know, what, what blows my mind is that a romance author wants to talk shit on it. <laughs> I'm like, you're here because of this book. Like if you started writing after 2011, you can thank 50 shades of gray. Like it, it is what it is. You know, I mean, obviously there's people who wrote before people there were huge, like Maya Banks or yes. Nora Roberts or Daniel Steele. I mean, you know, there were household names way before that, but this allowed those people to be seen in a light like never before. And so, you know, as there are problems in this book, there are things about it that I, I don't love love. Like, I don't feel like he is great at like aftercare, you know, in the beginning with her or explaining what BDSM is or really walking her through it. He's just a sadist and he has this need and he doesn't really explain it well. And but I know that is super annoying, but you realize too, when you look back on it, he mm -hmm. never follows through with it. She never slept in the other room. No, no. He exactly. took her right to his bed. Yeah. Like every, mm -hmm. he just keeps going. He's like, this uh -huh. happened. And then he brings it back. She's like, no, you sleep in my room. <laughs> <laughs> no, right? Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, and I think that's what I also love about it too, is that there's redemption with every chapter. You know, you, yeah. I feel like you fall more Gross. in love with him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And he grows as you read it. So it's just, you know, God, I just, I love how crazy he is and how wonderful it makes me feel. You know, it's been so long you know, I'm just, I appreciate it now on a, a, such a different level. Cause I don't think I've read it since I began writing romance. And yeah. now I look at it just like, oh, you know, I said to, I said the other day when we were talking about it and I said, you know, him and Jesse Ward were probably that Jody Ellen Maples wrote that this man trilogy, they are probably two of the most over the top crazy heroes I've ever read. And those books stayed with me, like burned yeah. holes in my chest. And it just feels really good to kind of revisit that and remember like, God, I used to love this shit, you know? And it's still, I still, it's still remember great. loving 50 shades of gray, mm -hmm. but there's some books that I've read and I've gone back and read and mm -hmm. was like, I hate this. Oh, really? I had a book oh, wow. that I remember the hero was super possessive and mm -hmm. stuff. And he was like, had a camera watching her and I went back and read it years later. It had been oh, recommended no. to me and I remember liking it. Uh -huh. And I read this book and I'm like, he's a motherfucking asshole. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I was yeah. mad. Like after I got done, I think mm -hmm. I text Jen Frederick because she recommend recommended it to me forever <laughs> ago. I mean yeah, like yeah. seven years ago. And I was like, I went back and got the audio of this one and I'm so mad. Uh huh. <laughs> you know, I wonder that too about the the Bella Andre series that I read is like the Sullivan series. I wonder if I would like that as much as I used to because I was obsessed with that series. But it's so contemporary and sweet and just predictable. But those are still really great, though. You know, like those are like a comfort read. There's a girl I think named Noelle Adams. She puts uh -huh. out a book like once a month, and she has those very Harlequin esque, uh -huh. where the girls are virgins. They're mm -hmm. like, it's so cliche, <sighs> and you can protect. You know what's coming, and actually, he does really dick stuff uh -huh. every time. So then he's got to win it back. But I keep reading those. I'll randomly mm -hmm. binge them. It really does make me want to go back through my Kindle from the beginning and just start rereading everything. Like yeah. it's just it's put that spark in me. And you know, I've just I've just enjoyed it. I've enjoyed the shit out of it. And I did not think I would. I don't I, a week ago I would have said I'm never gonna read that again. And I just I heard it and I heard those opening words and I was like, It's I'm a done. rabbit hole. That's why I actually don't generally like to even talk about the shades. <laughs> I'm probably going to read the whole series now. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm just, I'm, oh, I love it so much. So I can't well, really talk about what I'm reading because uh -huh. it's still Jess and Dean. <laughs> <laughs> are you serious? Oh, no. What are you reading now? I thought you read them all. 
No, I have like five left. Oh no, what are you gonna do when they're gone? These ones are longer. They okay. look like more suspense raids and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I made myself, I'm in the middle of one, which I made myself put down. But the other ones that are longer, I told myself I'm not gonna read them. I'm saving them for the beach. Oh when wow. I go out of town. So I'm like, yes. Cause they're easy, safe mm -hmm. reads to me. Like I know mm -hmm. what she's gonna do. She's gonna pull it through and they'll be yep. relaxing, nice beach reads. Do you know, I got somebody today, another message that was like, thank you for recommending her. I'm in the hole and I love it. <laughs> like that was their message today. Just <laughs> thank you for sharing that. And I was like, <laughs> Mel says you're welcome. <laughs> I downloaded the first one and I, I almost started reading it. Like I started the first page. And then my husband was like, oh, let's watch this thing or whatever. And I was like, shit, because I'd really, we, he had been waiting to watch something with me. So I closed the book and I was like, I'll read it this weekend. So I'm going to read it probably on Friday or something. So I'm going to save it for the weekend. But um, we watched this show on Disney the other day with the kids. And I just want to recommend it if you have a Disney Plus account. It's called Race to the Center of the Earth. And it's kind of like the... Um, uh, the the Amazing Race, the show that used to come on, you know, where people like couples try to go all over the world and you compete. So it's teams of three and it's four teams and they start at different points in the earth and they all have to meet up at one central location and whoever gets there first wins a million dollars. And so it's really cool, like the the teams that are on it and stuff and they're all really fun. Like there's a group, there's three of them are teachers Three of them are cops in Alaska, like three of them are rock climbers, but they're all like pretty physically fit. And so um, my kids and I, we loved it. We watched, I think each episode's like 45 minutes and there's seven or eight episodes. And we were like, go, go, go. And we were like screaming uh -huh. on TV and stuff. Lydia looked over at me one time. She's like, this show makes me anxious. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I know. But it was really fun. So. If anybody's looking for something uh, new and fun to watch on Disney Plus, that was, I loved it. We started watching on Netflix called Haunted. Oh, what's that? So it's a series where people come on and they, you know, you watch forensic files or whatever and they reenact like the crime. Yeah. Yeah. This is people sitting down and they tell you a haunted story that happened <gasps> to them. No. And they reenact the story. No, what if it happens? No, what if it comes some alive? of them? Well, some of it they tell how the ghost came to be, and some of them are sad. Like I watched the first two episodes, and I skipped the third one what? because it was going to be like a child dying. Oh, so I was no, like, no, we can't watch this that. One. No, I'm like, I'm gonna skip this one, but that doesn't exist. I enjoyed. Like I was mm -hmm. like, oh shit, oh shit, mm -hmm. and then Rob was like debunking it and stuff like that it's like i know that's not possible because such and such I'm like whatever oh my god i spelled something wrong in a text message to lb today and she corrected me i was like i'm sorry i didn't know kevin was in this group chat <laughs> <laughs> i was like fuck off don't correct me on a text message <laughs> so does, does rob watch it with you though like did he watch it to try to make sure that he could tell you it was fake no, well, I always I don't watch scary stuff alone. No. Uh, uh, he, yeah. <laughs> he even fell he fell asleep when we were watching it, and I turned it off. I was like, no, you like I'm poke out. him? You're like, you better wake up. I can't watch this without you. <laughs> At one point, I was. I was like, did you see that? <laughs> and then I just turned it off. <laughs> he must have enjoyed it though, because he asked me because I finished one. I think when he was going in and out, he asked me how it ended. Mm -hmm. so. Well, he's into it now. He can't pretend he doesn't. So, all right. Well, I'm going to read you um, some stuff about Piper Rain today. Um, oh, oh, before I forget, they have a giveaway this week. It's a $25 Amazon gift card. So make sure you follow all our social media posts and enter to win because they're doing that, which is awesome. So um, I have their book bio up too. So Piper Rain is a USA Today bestselling author duo. Our goal is to bring you romance stories that have heartwarming humor with a side of sizzle. Okay, you caught us. That's our tagline. <laughs> a little about us. We both have Kindles full of one-clickable books. We're both married to husbands who had drive us to drink. We're both chauffeurs to our kids. Most of all, we love hot heroes and quirky heroines that make us laugh, and we hope you do too. 
It's like, that's oh, adorable. Yeah. Home run <laughs> on the book by Piper Rain. And uh, this is the book uh, bio for Brood Love, which we're going to play you the first installment today. I lived in the small town of Sunrise Bay, Alaska, my entire adult life. I have a successful business, great friends, and a community I feel a part of. I never felt like I was missing, well, anything, until the day Craig walks into my coffee shop, The Grind. Then he jogs by my coffee shop, shirtless. That was when I knew I was in trouble. Not only was he a nice guy, but he also had a killer body, a byproduct of his job as a trainer to MMA fighters, I guess. <laughs> when he asked me out, I'm flattered, but the man is almost 10 years my junior and only a temporary resident of this town. But flattery gets you everywhere, as they say. And in this case, it got him into my bed. It's a fun, is it, It's all fun between us until I start to wonder if we could possibly make this last. So um, I love, I know the shirtless great, running. I'm like, I want to read it. I know like the shirtless, like if you can fit that into a book by a, like a little, a little something like that. I'm just like, mm -hmm. I want it. The MMA fighter, he's running shirtless in a cop by a coffee shop. I picture it in my head exactly how it's going to look. Yeah, that was, it. it was awesome. This is Brood Love by Piper Rain. Read for you by Molly Stark. Chapter 1 Zoe Once the morning rush is finished, I sit on a stool with my own cup of coffee, enjoying the silence. It's downtime in my little coffee shop, The Grind, that's poised in the middle of Sunrise Bay, Alaska. Since it's the start of tourist season right now, my feet aren't conditioned like they will be when tourist season ends in six months. The bell rings to announce a customer and my head falls forward in defeat. All I wanted was one cup of coffee and the last morning glory muffin, but I can't very well complain about business. Hi, I say without looking up, taking one last sip of my brew before I set it down. Welcome to the grind. What can I get you? I round the counter to go back behind the cash register and glance up to see just a hard chest so my gaze moves farther up to find a pair of eyes as deep as the color of emeralds staring back at me. He's not from here. I'd know if he were, even without the suitcase that's currently beside him. This man is gorgeous. And young. Much too young for me, of course. Maybe early to mid-forties. Finding a guy in my small Alaskan town isn't as easy as you'd think even with the ratio of men to women in this state. Hey there, can I have a black Americano? He's staring at the chalkboard with a selection of coffees and drinks I serve. What size would you like? Large, please. His voice sounds groggy. Sure thing. He pulls out his wallet, pulling out some bills, but doesn't hand them over to me yet. And a muffin. Figures. I was going to eat the last muffin since I've had nothing all morning, but I'll just have to wait until Darby comes in to cover my break at lunch, and then I'll grab something at either Two Brothers and an Egg or from Truth or Dare Brewery. All I have is a morning glory muffin left. That work? Say no, say no, say no. Perfect. Makes it sound like it's not as bad for me as it probably is. He smiles, and of course, he's got a set of perfectly straight white teeth. These muffins taste too good to be healthy. My muffin girl is a magician in the kitchen. I ring him up, and he hands me the money, tossing the change I hand him back in the tip jar. Thank you. Muffin girl, huh? I step away to prepare his coffee and slyly move the muffin that was meant for me onto a new plate. Yes, so far she's exclusive to me. Is that what I have to look forward to in this town? Muffin girls? I laugh and he wheels a suitcase over to an empty table. Where are you from? He walks back over to me and widens his stance, crossing his arms over his chest. Even in his track pants and zip-up hoodie, his muscles underneath are obvious. The man is fit. Vegas. Oh, I'm about to mention how one of our townspeople just got married to an MMA fighter in Vegas and how coincidental that would be until my morning brain fog clears enough to put two and two together. Are you here for Logan Stone? 
He chuckles for a moment, his head rocking back. He told me this place was small, but I didn't think I'd get called out the first place I stop. Well, Sunrise Bay is small, and everyone kind of knows everyone's business. I point out the window to four older men with war veteran hats on who are gathered in the town square. See those guys? That's the gossip brigade. He turns around and laughs. Seriously? Even the one with the cane? Yep. I nod. I never would have guessed. He continues to watch them all congregate in the middle of the square with their coffees they brought from their own houses. They rarely venture in here, unless they're looking to catch a piece of gossip. Good thing you came here first, I wink, and it earns me a panty-melting smile from him. Walking over, I slide the coffee and plate with the muffin across the counter. Enjoy. Thanks. He accepts my offerings and walks over to the table. Want to join me? I have work to do, but thank you. I grab a rag and pretend to be wiping down the counter. Come on, the place is dead. I'll split the muffin. He winks this time, and my stomach feels like it's full of helium and could float from my body at any minute. I shouldn't. He's way too young for me. But it's stupid not to join him just because I'm attracted to him. I'm sure he's just being friendly with me, and if it were someone I didn't think was hot, I'd accept the invitation. I'll join you for a few minutes, but I'm not taking any of the muffin. He heads over to the coffee prep area stocked with sugar, creamers, stirs, and plastic silverware. When he returns, he cuts the muffin in half and places his half on a napkin and pushes the plate to the other side of the small table. Please, my mom would smack me if I didn't share. Shaking my head, I sit across from him. Well, I'd hate for your mom to be disappointed. I'm Craig, by the way. He holds his hand out to me. Zoe. We shake hands and warmth spreads up my arm when our eyes lock. I'm Logan's trainer. That's why I'm up here. Really? Where is he staying? I haven't heard much since he arrived announcing that he was Nikki Green's husband after a drunken night in Vegas. He laughs. Yeah, I looked about as surprised as you do right now when he called me and said we're training up here for the next couple of months before his next fight. This isn't Logan, at least not the guy I know. He glances outside like he still can't believe where he is. Is he a nice guy? I ask because Nikki deserves a guy who will treat her right. He smiles. He's the best. Honest, hard worker, man of his word, and he's the best fighter I've ever trained. He bites into the muffin, chews, and swallows. Pointing down at the muffin, he says, Okay, what do I have to do to get the muffin girl's number? I shake my head. I'm not giving him my sources. He laughs and leans back in his chair. I'm glad I picked this place to walk into first. I feel the flush on my cheeks. Am I stupidly naive to think there's something here on his end, too? An attraction of some sort? The bell over the door rings. You two better be careful. The gossip brigade is spying. Marla Green walks in and points to the four older men in the square who now have their gazes set on me and Craig. I quickly stand and abandon Craig at the table. Hey, Marla, what can I get you today? Chapter Two Zoe Craig continues to eat his muffin and drink his coffee while I help Marla at the register. Even though she married the husband of my best friend who passed away years ago, I've grown closer to her. I'd like to think Lori would have liked her. She's good for Hank and the kids, and when she was alive, Lori's main focus was her family. Still, sometimes it's hard not to wonder what it'd be like if Lori hadn't died so young. Hey, Marla, what can I get you? She glances to the table I was sitting at, then back at me, giving me a look to say, who's that? But I'm not going to answer, especially with him here. Just a regular coffee, please. She leans over the counter, lowering her voice. Then I'll let you get back to what you were doing. I roll my eyes. I was just talking to a new person in town. She glances over and smiles at him. You better snatch him up. I shake my head, wishing she'd lower her voice. Lucky for me, Craig gets a phone call, 
stands from the table, and takes his coffee with him when he leaves. Thanks a lot, Zoe. He raises his coffee cup in the air and leaves the cafe. The breath I've been holding rushes out in a whoosh. Quite the man, Marla says, her gaze following him through the windows. Watch it, or I'll tell Hank. I chuckle. She waves me off. Please, he's no Hank. I laugh. Want to change that order now? Marla rarely drinks coffee. She's one of my fancier coffee clients and rarely gets the same thing twice in a week. She laughs. Since you're not going to be screwing anyone on the table anymore, I'll take a cappuccino. I dump the regular coffee and go to work on preparing her cappuccino. Did you find out why he's in town? I look at her from the corner of my eye and out the window to see that Craig was gone. Turns out he's your new son-in-law's trainer. Seriously? So Logan Stone really is serious about Nikki, huh? Turns out, yeah. His name is Craig, and he said Logan told him they'd be up here at least a couple of months until his next fight. A huge smile forms on Marla's lips. I like the sound of that. You're the only mom I know who would be happy that their daughter got drunk married in Vegas. I pass her the cappuccino and round the corner to grab my coffee and half muffin left on the table. When I pick up the plate, I notice a small piece of paper with a number on it and the words, maybe you can be my tour guide, scrawled beneath. I have no time to process before Marla's staring over my shoulder. She bumps me with her shoulder. Oh, I knew it. Please. I crumple up the piece of paper and shove it in my apron. He's half my age. Marla sits down at a table, and I find us both staring off in the direction he disappeared to. You are not, 10 years at most. Yes, 10 years, I say. I've never dated anyone younger than me before. She leans back in her chair and studies me. Think of it this way. He's here for a couple of months. Maybe just have a little fun. I sip my coffee. Marla has a point. It has been a long dry spell. Zoe, she leans forward and puts her hand on mine. I know you were Lori's best friend, and I'm not one to step in where I shouldn't, so just tell me to back off if you like. But since I moved back to Sunrise Bay all those years ago, I've only seen you on a handful of dates. The grind is doing great. You can take some time off and enjoy life a little. Enjoy that hot body that was just in here. I sigh. You know, I've always stopped myself from pouring my heart out to Marla, even though we have a lot of friends in common. I love Hank like a brother, and he and Lori's children mean everything to me. Marla's been a great stepmom to them, never forgetting the fact that Lori will always be their mother. When Lori and I started this place, I thought for sure I'd still find a husband and have a family of my own. But after she passed, I wanted this place to be a success as an ode to her, so the kids could come here through the years and remember their mother. I liked to think that if she was looking down, she'd be proud of what I accomplished with our dream. I look back at the wall with all the pictures of us when we first built this place. And you've done just that, Marla says. But throughout the years, this place has become my love. I'm older now, set in my ways, too old to set myself up for heartbreak with a man 10 years younger than me who lives in Vegas, one that's probably around young, beautiful women all the time. Marla laughs. Then just have fun. There's nothing wrong with that. I doubt you're going to catch feelings in two months' time. I raise my eyebrows since she came to town and had Hank under her thumb in a matter of weeks. She laughs again. Hank and I are different. We had a special bond in high school and just picked up where we left off. Her phone rings and she clicks ignore. Answer it. This issue is definitely not going to be solved anytime soon. Marla answers and her voice fades into the background because the little piece of paper I picked up feels like it's burning a hole in my pocket. I can't deny the part of me that wouldn't mind having a fling with a guy like Craig. What harm could it do? As long as I keep my heart protected, a little fun in the sack after work wouldn't be so bad, would it? Chapter three, Zoe. 
The next day after a night staring at my ceiling instead of sleeping, I'm feeling like I need a little extra pep in my step in the middle of the morning rush. Thankfully, Darby could be here this morning to help out. I have a sign on the door to hire more help, with the hopes of a high school student applying who would like to work nights. The cafe is buzzing with noise, the sounds of dishes on tables and the hum of conversation when suddenly the cafe quiets. There's no chatter, no clinking of ceramic cups and plates, no sliding of the chairs on the cement flooring. I stand from getting more to-go cups from the lower cabinet to see all of our customers' attention peering out the window. What's up? I ask Darby, whose jaw is just as slackened as every other female's in the place. I wave my hand in front of her face, and she barely blinks, so I follow her line of sight. My jaw slowly lowers. Craig and Logan are running through the downtown area shirtless, sweat dripping down their mouth-watering chests, and all of our tongues are out waiting to catch a drop. It's pathetic, really, but even some of the men are watching them. That's Logan Stone? Darby asks. Uh Uh-huh. I say, even more creeped out that I too am mesmerized by that man because he's even younger than Craig. I did manage to do some Googling last night and found out that Logan is 34 while Craig is 45. Turns out I'm the winner for being the oldest. Yay me. Marla's crazy if she thinks I'm allowing that man to weave through the cobwebs between my legs. Damn, Nikki's lucky, Darby murmurs. She sure is, someone across the counter says. Does he have a grandpa? Darby and I both tear our gazes away to laugh when we see Fran, one of our regulars. You're dressed for the occasion. Go out and join them. I nod at her eggplant-colored velour tracksuit. Maybe they'll bench press me. Her eyes light up. Darby and I laugh. I nudge her. Let's get back to work. As if the two men know they have an audience, they slow down their run to a jog in place before stretching, putting their asses up in the air. I feel dirty, Fran says. We should. We're no better than construction workers who whistle at women. I busy myself putting on some fresh coffee, keeping one eye on Craig. Okay, Maybe I'd like him to be the one to brush away those cobwebs between my legs. Show me everything I've forgotten over the years. You're right. Okay, everyone, let's carry on. Fran shouts, and surprisingly, people listen. Everything goes back to normal until the door chime rings and in walk Craig and Logan. At least they've put their shirts that were tucked into the waistband of their pants a second ago back on. But the way the sweat clings to their skin... It's not doing much to hide what's underneath the cotton fabric, which is a whole lot of muscle. Craig grabs two waters from the small cooler in front of the register and puts them on the counter. I've got it, Logan says, pulling money out of the zipper part of his athletic pants. Shit, sorry, it's a little sweaty. Darby takes the money while gawking at him. I swear if he wasn't here, she'd rub it down her chest. No problem. Hey, Zoe. Craig nods, cracking open the bottle and downing a big gulp. This is Logan. Logan, this is Zoe. She owns the place. Logan wipes his hand on his shirt and holds it out across the counter. Nice to meet you. You too. I've known Nikki a long time. You're a lucky guy. A huge smile creases his lips. I am? Oh, he's a keeper. I'm gonna go sit now. Logan looks between us, and I get the feeling that this was planned before they came in. It makes me feel like I'm in grade school again. He leaves, and Craig rests his hip on the counter. You can imagine my disappointment when you never called last night. I roll my eyes, but can't stop smiling. You'll come across other offers. Just give it time. I walk away from the area of the counter where we help people and over to the display case to check stock before Darby and Fran overhear everything, though they've probably heard enough already. But he follows me along the counter anyway. Let me take you out, he says. I laugh. 
Where are you going to take me? He shakes his head. I can ask around. He turns to the crowd. Where do you take a woman for a nice dinner around here? Everyone stops what they're doing and stares. I feel my cheeks grow hot. Tara and Mara and Lake Starlight, someone calls out. Take her on a boat tour at sunset, a woman says. A few other suggestions are spit out, and I look down at my shoes so people can't see how flushed I am. I'll find something for us to do. You just have to agree to go out with me. I lean forward and lower my voice. I appreciate the offer. I really do. But you're aware that I'm much older than you, right? His tongue slides out and licks his bottom lip. He doesn't answer, but gives me a nod. Then why would you want to go out with me? I like you. I think you're hot. You seem nice. He shrugs. Craig makes it sound so simple. From everything I've experienced over the years, though, life isn't simple. I've had many men try to control me, tell me that I work too much, that I need to spend more time with them, that I'm too independent. I like my job, and I'm not about to sacrifice what I've built just for some regular sex. Even if it's with the sexiest guy I've ever met. It's a dinner and conversation. Come on. He smiles at me like he's not going to back down until I agree. I shake my head and bite my lower lip. His gaze follows my movement. Keep doing that with your lip and I'm going to throw you over my shoulder like a barbarian and make you have dinner with me. I sigh, but can't take the smile off my face. I haven't been pursued this hard in a long time, which is a little sad, but thrilling just the same. Okay. I nod. His face breaks into an even bigger smile. Great, tonight, six o'clock. Where do you live? I grab a napkin and scribble my address down. Just an FYI, fast food and beer aren't going to do it for me. He laughs, putting the napkin in his pants pocket. Prepare to be smitten, Zoe. He winks and heads over to the table Logan's occupying. I beeline to my office to compose myself. What did I just agree to? Chapter four. At six o'clock exactly, there's a knock on my door. I can't help but smile as I walk to the door while still putting one of my hoop earrings in. But the smile wipes off my face as soon as I open the door because holy hell, this guy can clean up. Hey, he says, rocking back on his heels. He's wearing a nice pair of slacks with a V-neck t-shirt. Casual, but dressy at the same time. His gaze falls down my body and back up. You look gorgeous. Thank you. I open the door wider for him to come in. Do we need to leave right away or would you like a drink? He flips his wrist up to look at his watch. An expensive looking watch. Something you don't usually find on a man's wrist up here in Alaska. We've got some time. Great. Beer or wine? Sorry, I'm not much of a hard alcohol person. I sense his gaze on me as he follows me to the kitchen, and I have a hard time controlling my breathing. Beer would be awesome, but don't tell Logan. I just cut him off of beer this afternoon. Opening the fridge, I take a beer out for him and pour myself a glass of white wine. Your secret is safe with me. Thanks. I like him to think I suffer along with him, although... I'm not sure whether he's going to train as hard as usual this time around. Because of Nikki? I ask and motion for him to join me on the back porch. He follows my signal and walks out the back screen door behind me. The weather is unusually warm this week, and I plan on taking full advantage. I would have made us dinner to enjoy eating outside, but I thought that if we stayed in, it could be dangerous. He's got it bad. He takes a pull of his beer and sits down in the love seat portion of my outside seating. The longer I stand here deciding whether I should sit next to him or take the chair, the more awkward it feels. So I slide into the chair. Nikki's wonderful. I'd rather not talk about my boss and his new wife right now. I sip my wine. What would you like to talk about? You? 
He leans back and rests his ankle on his knee. Did you grow up here? No, I grew up in Anchorage. It was my ex-partner who got me to Sunrise Bay. So he's probably a sorry bastard right about now. He winks. I laugh. Uh, by ex-partner, I mean my business partner. She passed. His flirtatious grin vanishes, and he opens his mouth. But I hold my hand up to stop him before he can apologize. It's okay. It was years ago. We opened the grind together. Her name was Lori, and she was married to Hank Green, which means nothing to you, but Hank Green is now married to Marla, and Marla is Nikki's mom. He stares up for a second, and I see him trying to connect all the dots. I can't help but laugh at his attempt, because the Green family is so much more complicated than that. But Craig doesn't need to know the specifics. I'm sorry about your friend. What made you keep it going? I shrug. No one has really ever asked me that question. At first, it was to keep us out of the red, to not leave Hank with any more bills or problems after Lori's death. But I'm not sure I want to divulge that to Craig, since this is our first night out together. I love coffee? He laughs. You must. I'm sure you have to deal with cranky people until they get their fix. I nod. True. Although, once they smell the fresh ground beans, they usually calm down. He tips his beer back. What about you? You're a trainer? Why not the fighter? He rests his beer on the table. Pulling out the big guns, huh? You don't have to answer. He shakes his head. Nah, I'll answer. I tried my hand at fighting, but never won. I was pitiful. Turns out coaching and training was the perfect spot for me. Maybe I shouldn't have asked such an invasive question. I'm sure it's a sore spot, and I'm making him share it on our first date. Don't you dare look at me like that. I get paid pretty great to run and train without ever getting my ass kicked. No broken bones, black eyes, or shattered ribs. He picks his beer back up. So, you're happy? He nods and meets my gaze. I'm happy. Although, eventually, I'm gonna have to find a hobby and retire. At some point, I'll be too old to keep up with the young boys. I sip my wine. You looked like you were keeping up great with Logan. Immediately, I wish I could take back those words. They're only proof that I was one of the gawkers earlier today. It's harder to keep every year. Things that used to feel easy are an effort now. I swear my knees grow weaker by the day. But damn if I'm gonna sit here and talk about all my ailments with a beautiful woman when I should be impressing her with my one-arm push-ups. He grins. One arm? I picture him shirtless and all the muscles I saw on display earlier clenching and releasing as he performs the feat. If you're good, I'll show you later. He winks and stands. Come on, let's really get this date started. I reach for his beer bottle but he grabs it first and holds out his hand for my wine glass. Thank you. I follow him inside my house, locking the back door. You have a great house. Thanks. It's small, but it's mine. I live outside the square so that I can walk to and from work. It's a two-bedroom house with a private backyard backing onto trees that I would never sacrifice. It's been so long since I've had a permanent address, it's hard to imagine for me. He steps out of the house and I lock up behind us. That feeling when you sit down on the couch and put your feet up, sighing that you're home, that it feels like home. I smile over at him. It's a nice feeling, but in a way, I envy him because he's seen the world, or at the very least, the country. While I've lived my whole adult life making coffee for the same people in the same small town. We step down to the sidewalk. Where are we going? I ask. I rented a dinner boat. You don't get seasick, do you? He stops at the corner. I stop walking, surprised that he happened to pick something I've always wanted to do, but never had anyone to do it with. Sometimes when I'm walking along the bay, I'd see couples having romantic dates, and I'd get that tug on my heart, like maybe I'm missing out. No, I don't get seasick. Great night for a boat ride. He takes my hand in his. His fingers are calloused and rough, but my stomach flutters at his touch. 
It's a man's touch. I thought the same thing. Back. Hey, lady listeners. So, like I said, be sure to enter this week's giveaway for Piper Rain and Brood Love. And be sure to check out all their good stuff. We're going to post it all over social media, all their books and all that. I was about to say crap, but it's not crap. (laughs) It's all the stuff that we're going to like throw at you. So make sure you go check it out. And um, we're going to play the second installment on Thursday. So I guess we'll see you then. Tell them what to do. Fuck your day up. Make today your bitch. Don't be a dick. Bye, guys. Bye. Read me romance. Read, read me romance.